What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Call of Duty Vanguard. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving on to one of my favorite SMGs in the game. This is the Type 100. And starting it off, as always, let's get into our damage profile. And with this gun, without any attachments, it's going to be a 5 to 7 shot kill to the body, depending on where in the body you're shooting them, which is a lot of shots to kill for Vanguard. As for headshots though, we can cut that down to a four shot kill up close with just one single headshot mixed in with a torso shot. As for a rate of fire, this is basically bang on average for an SMG at 750 rounds per minute. And what this means for our time to kill potential is in the five shot kill range, it'll be a 320 millisecond time to kill. Whereas when it's a six shot kill, it's now gonna be a 400 millisecond time to kill. These are not very good time to kill values for this game. If however, we do manage to land that one single headshot mixed in with the torso shots for a four shot kill, our new time to kill potential is 240 milliseconds, which is much more competitive. As for our bullet velocity, this is just standard for SMGs at 353 meters per second. And now let's move into our range values. And when it comes to our ranges, we've actually got a pretty solid range profile for an SMG in this game. Our five shot kill range extends out to 20 meters. And then beyond that, it's gonna be a six shot kill out to infinity as long as you're hitting torso shots. However, beyond 38 meters, if you start mixing in limb shots, you can actually get a seven shot kill with this gun. So it's a very low damage gun. As for hardcore, the Type 100 can't get a one shot kill to the body without any attachments. And it can only get a one shot kill to the head or the neck out to 20 meters. Beyond that, it'll be a two shot kill even to the head. Then let's have a look at our hip fire, which as you can see here, we're actually tied with the Sten as having the best hip fire spread out of all of the SMGs and most of the guns in the entire game. So excellent hip fire spread with this gun. And then after that, let's have a look at our idle sway, which as you can see here, there's definitely some sway there. This is pretty standard for an SMG though. This can absolutely affect your first shot accuracy if you're trying to stretch your ranges out a bit. As for recoil though, the Type 100 is incredibly accurate. This gun kicks basically straight upwards with just a little bit of side-to-side -side bounce. There's really not much side-to-side -side bounce there. It's very accurate and easy to control though. And then just a quick look at our aim down sight spread or bloom. As you can see there, there is very little bloom with this gun and this should generally not be an issue for you whatsoever. Moving on, let's have a look at our handling stats. And when it comes to aim down sight time, this is a bit on the slower side for an SMG at 240 milliseconds. However, our sprint out times are a little bit faster than most of the SMGs at 167 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time. As for our reload add time, this is right around average for an SMG at 1.67 seconds. And then finally, for base stats without any attachments, let's have a look at our mobility, which is just solid across the board. It's basically right around average for an SMG across the board, which is a good thing because SMGs move quite fast. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for the base stats of the Type 100. And honestly, this gun isn't looking all that great so far without attachments. Sure, it's really accurate and it's got decent mobility and handling and hip fire, but it just doesn't kill very fast. It's got a very slow base time to kill. However, the attachments are really what make this gun shine. So let's hop into our barrels first. And of course, we're going to have a look at the recoil with our different barrel attachments. And as you can see here, the 196 millimeter light barrel will increase our recoil, especially that side to side bounce will be increased with this. After that, the 374 millimeter barrel, this significantly cuts down on our recoil, but it also has a massive negative impact on our handling stats. Then we have the precision barrel, which helps a little bit, but not a whole lot compared to the base. And then finally with the rapid barrel, this one pretty massively increases the recoil because it also pretty massively increases our rate of fire. After that, let's have a look at our ranges with these barrels, and most of the barrels will impact our range in some capacity, but only two of the barrels directly affect our time to kill potentials, and these are the final two barrels, so we're going to dive a little bit deeper into these ones. The first one to look at is the fourth barrel, which is the precision barrel, and with this one, it reduces our body damage, so now it's a 5, 7, or 8 shot kill to the body, which is ridiculous. However, it massively boosts our headshot damage, as you can see there, and we can actually get a two-shot kill to the head up close, which gives us an 80 millisecond time to kill, which is ridiculously fast. Unfortunately, though, our body time to kill potential is extremely slow now with this particular barrel, and as a result, unless you are going for headshots, I don't recommend using this barrel at all. If you're specifically going for headshot challenges, though, absolutely toss this attachment on. Moving on to the final barrel, though, the fifth one, this is the Rapid Barrel, which pretty massively increases our rate of fire up to 937 rounds per minute. That's a very big increase from the base. And what this does to our time to kill potential is now in our five shot kill range, it's gonna be a 256 millisecond time to kill. Whereas our six shot kill range is 320 milliseconds to kill, which is a much more competitive time to kill that you'd expect out of an SMG. 
However, like you saw earlier, this also very noticeably increases our recoil. And as a result, I just consider this to be a very different gun once you're using this barrel. It's not necessarily a bad barrel. It's not necessarily a great barrel. It just changes how this gun performs in general. So you might want to try this out. You might want to use it if that suits your playstyle. But for me, I like my Type 100 being accurate, so I tend to stay away from this one. So those are the barrels that directly impact our time to kill on this gun. However, there is one more barrel I just wanted to talk about a little bit. This is the first one. This is the Sakura 282mm wrap. And with this, you get no enemy skulls, so when you kill enemy players, they don't get that little skull indicator when their teammates are dying, which can really help if you're trying to be stealthy. And it also states firing visibility to enemies as a pro. And I did do the testing on this to see if this maybe keeps you off the minimap. Maybe this is a free suppressor, and that's not the case. You still show up on the enemy's minimap if they're using radar or if they have a spy plane up. And also, you still show up on the compass, so this is not a built-in suppressor. Then I also tested muzzle flash as well as the tracer effect, and those are unchanged as well. There's still muzzle flash, there's still a tracer when you fire, so I really don't know what this actually means when it comes to that firing visibility to enemies. So that's a little bit of a strange barrel. I don't fully understand every element of it. Now let's move on to the magazines though. And first up, just like with the barrels, let's have a look at our magazine recoil, which as you can see here, the 30 Russian short does increase our recoil a little bit. There's a little bit more side to side bounce, a little bit more initial recoil as well, but it seems to cap out at roughly the same point. And then with the 8 mil curse rounds, we don't really see much of an increase to recoil at all here until we get to our maximum magnitude. There's slightly more horizontal recoil. In general though, both of these are still very accurate. As for how these different calibers affect our ranges, as you can see here, 30 Russian short not only turns it into a 3-shot kill up close for a great time to kill potential, it also increases all of our range values. And we see a very similar story, although to a lesser extent in every area, with the 8mm curse rounds. It still improves our time to kill and our range values, but just not as much as 30 Russian short. And let's dive a little bit deeper into these two different magazines, and we'll start it off with that 30 Russian short, which is an incredible attachment to be using. With this, it massively boosts the amount of damage that you deal to the body, well, not impacting your head or neck damage at all. But this does come at the cost of your rate of fire. This is reduced by a noticeable margin. However, this increased damage more than makes up for it. We have an incredible time to kill potential of 176 milliseconds to the body up close. So this is the attachment that takes the Type 100 from being a pretty subpar SMG to suddenly being a top tier weapon in this game. And as a result, if you have this unlocked, I highly recommend using this on the Type 100. It's a complete game changer for this gun. Now having said that, the 8mm Kurtz rounds are also not bad. Now with these, we get the same rate of fire potential as with the 30 Russian short. However, we don't get as much of a damage increase to the torso. And what this means is it's going to be a 4 to 6 shot kill instead of a 3 to 5 shot kill like with the 30 Russian short. And this gives us a time to kill potential of 264 milliseconds up close, which is not too bad. It's not incredible by any means, but it's a very solid and competitive time to kill potential. So the 8mm Kurtz rounds, if you're comparing it to the base version of the Type 100, you're still seeing a lot of improvement to the gun while using this. However, it's just not quite as good as the 30 Russian short. In the vast majority of situations, you're going to be far better off with 30 Russian shorts. However, if you're looking for that higher magazine capacity, the 8mm Kurtz is still a viable option for you. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for the unique attachments that I wanted to have a look at for the Type 100. And now it's time to move into some excellent attachment combinations that make this gun very dominant in this game. And I'm just going to share my favorite setup with this gun right up front here. This is my beast setup and absolutely my preferred way of running this gun. And the keys with this are going to be the 30 Russian short, obviously, that's very important. We've also got the gung-ho proficiency for a literal instant sprint out time, so you don't have to worry about sprint out times at all. And I do have that first barrel attachment as well, the 282mm wrap. And this is just to support my stealthy flanking sort of playstyle, so those skulls aren't appearing for enemy players when I kill their teammates. And I really do notice this helping me a lot. A lot of times the enemies are just clueless after I've killed a bunch of their teammates and I'm approaching their spawn. This particular setup is very accurate and easy to control. You can stretch your ranges out with it, no problem. It's got a ridiculously good time to kill potential to the body, solid handling, instant sprint out time. And with all of that combined, this gun is dominant in extremely close quarter situations, while also being extremely consistent and very solid for stretching out to mid to longer ranges. This is honestly one of my favorite setups to use in the entire game of Vanguard, and usually if I get a really tough match where I'm struggling and the enemies have map control, this is my go-to setup to combat that and try and make the comeback. 
Now, having said that, I do want to bring some variety with my class setups, and therefore I'm still going to recommend this other attachment setup, and this is one that's designed to have a great aim down sight stray speed, and also a higher magazine capacity. I am in no way saying this is as good as the previous setup that I just shared. This is just something that's a little bit different. And with this, we're using the 8mm Kurtz rounds for that larger magazine capacity. We're still using Gung Ho just because that's an incredibly powerful attachment for being aggressive. And then pretty much everything else is stacked up to give us a great aim walking movement speed or aim down sight stray speed. And this particular setup is insanely accurate, even more accurate than the previous setup that I shared. It's very, very easy to control. And it has a very good aim down sight stray speed. It's not like the best in the game at this, but it is a very solid aim down sight stray speed. So you can be strafing around while aiming down sights. And this is just a nice little alternative to the previous setup that I shared. But like I said, if you're really trying to be as competitive as possible, just use the first setup that I shared for you guys. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the Type 100. Like I said earlier, without attachments, this gun, I think, is not very good. It's pretty subpar when it comes to SMGs. However, if you can suffer through and get that 30 Russian short attachment unlocked, that's where this gun really starts to dominate. And the moment I've got that attachment on there, this becomes one of my favorite guns in the entire game to use. I absolutely love it. And if you guys haven't really tried it out yet with that first setup that I shared, I'd highly recommend trying it out. Now, of course, that is just my opinion. I'd like to hear from you guys in the comment section below. What do you think of the Type 100 in Call of Duty Vanguard? Do you agree with me once you get that 30 Russian short, this gun is just amazing? Or do you just not like it in general? Just let me know those thoughts down below. Also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I've now covered all of the assault rifles and a bunch of the SMGs, and we're going to be working our way through the rest of the SMGs in the coming weeks. If you enjoy the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.